All right, everyone, I won't keep you long. Thank you for clicking to find out um, the best way that you can pass multiple choice questions. So let's get right to it. This is my free gift to you. Any schooling that you're gonna do in healthcare, you're gonna need to pass a multiple choice exam. So I'm gonna open my whiteboard and I'm gonna show you a technique that is not found anywhere. Why? Because I developed it and I've been teaching it to my students for over a decade, my nursing um, students. So let's get this whiteboard and let's get started. Okay, everyone, my whiteboard should be up here. And let's start with what the diagram is. The name of it is confusion to conclusion. What does that mean? That means that a question is being posed to you, correct? And that question, it's a question mark. That's the sign used because it's some state of confusion. You need to select the correct answer in order to be to end the confusion. So what we like to say is that the correct answer ends the confusion posed by the question. So let me walk you through this here. You have a question. You could insert any question here. I dare you to try it on your own and I want you to send me feedback, any question, any discipline. And for some reason, my board, let me just make it a little bit smaller so you could see. So any question here, I have a question, a preset question. Let me pick a nice color so you all can see. Um, maybe it's only in black. So the question is, what is your professor's name, correct? And so that is my name here. Insert the question. Most multiple choice, you are offered um, four options. There are some that have five, like a select all that apply, but we are going with four here, which is the larger majority of multiple choice questions. Good, we know how multiple choice is set up. So now here's your question and you have option A, B, C, and D. This should be on the next line here. Steph as Victoria, Stephanie Victoria, and nurse. I'm gonna make this question easy for you. The correct option is C, but now we're not in just finding the correct option, is testing it to make sure you indeed selected the correct option. So, and, and this will be much clearer, I have an ebook, but based on my knowledge of the topic, which option is best, okay? So once you read the question carefully, you're presented with four options, you select an option. So people might say, how do you select an option? You select your option on your knowledge of the content. So all right, guys, if you've never taken a physics class, I'm not saying you could walk into physics and take a multiple choice exam. I'm saying if you study chapter five in any subject, they give you a test on chapter five, this is what we're going through. So you do have to study. But let's move on. You have the uh, question, you have options, and you select an option, right? So everyone can get to this point of selecting an option based on your knowledge, what you studied, your class material, etc. So now you have to ask yourself, based on my knowledge of the topic, which option is best, all right? So that would lead you to C. Have I analyzed all of the facts in the stated question to see if my selection is in line with my knowledge? Meaning I may know something, and this is what gets students all the time. Professor Victoria, I studied it at New Chapter 5. You know, I still got a 72, right? There was something in the question or in the option that would have honed you in even further that you missed. So have I analyzed all of the facts in the stated question to see if my selection is in line with my knowledge? C, am I missing anything in my understanding of the question and my chosen answer? All right, are you missing anything? So you ask yourself those three questions with regard to the option you've selected. Then we take it a step further. You see selected option, take the correct answer and place in front of the question. Ask yourself, is it conclusive? Now, I would love for all of you to post YouTube videos of you doing this and seeing if it works, all right? Are you prepared to be amazed? Stephanie Victoria is your professor's name, period. That's a period because that is indeed my name, 
Okay, so once you take the selected option, put in front of the question. Now, I don't mean if it's grammatically correct. Ask yourself, is it conclusive? Meaning that when I say Stephanie Victoria is your professor's name, period, it does not lead you to ask any further questions. It doesn't lead you to say, but this and, and that. Now, let's test it. Can you do it with anything else? Steph is your professor's name. You might say, Steph who? Steph what, right? Steph, there are some men who abbreviated Steph. There are some women named Stefania. It's close to Stephanie, but it's not Stephanie. And if all of you have been going to school, you know every time you get a multiple cho uh, choice question, you get it wrong, you are close, but no cigar, right? SV is your professor's name. If I said SV was my name, you would ask me, what does it stand for? It could be Stephen Vargas, it could be anything. If I said nurse is your professor's name, nurse is not a name. Nurse is an occupation. I happen to be a nurse. I'm very lucky that I am and thankful that I went to nursing school, but that's not the point. That is not my name, okay? The correct answer will always reign truer than all the other options. Okay, I think I made up a word saying truer, but Stephanie Victoria is your professor's name. And this question mark changes to a period. So when you ask yourself, is, is it conclusive, meaning conclusive, it's come to a conclusion. It's a conclusive statement, period. There's nothing else to add, think, or ponder. You can have confidence that you have stumbled on the correct answer i know all you had to do was pick your option and put it in front of the question who knew right okay so one more thing i want to show you and there's way more but i wanted to run you through that let's open the second page of this whiteboard um so this is just a model of what the confusion to conclusion model looks like in abstract for all of my people who love a picture depiction. You have a question mark, it's weighing heavy on you. Here's your brain thinking, you come to an answer, you're like, I'm gonna go with option C. You're going to take option C and question mark, right? So the question and the correct answer is a complete thought. That's what this purple bubble is meant to represent. The puzzle pieces now go together. It's a complete thought. Now here, light bulb, Eureka, you're about to pass your exam. You're super excited. The correct answer now changes the question from a question mark to an exclamation or period, but something conclusive. All right, so guys, listen. I want you, let's go to page three. You're gonna get multiple choice books, honestly, 15 multiple choice techniques, 30 multiple choice techniques. Here's the truth, okay? You have a minute and a half and two minutes is pushing it on a question, right? Really for you to be safe, and to have a little bit extra time to focus on a more challenging question, you need to read and pick an answer in a minute, all right? That's the standard, but when you write as an educator, when you write a test question, you're supposed to give students about a minute and a half is usually the industry standard to answer questions. So guess what guys, all those books with 30 tips, especially if you're a slow reader, you don't have time to apply the 30 tips. So I'm gonna give you two tips. Again, is for those who studied, you can't walk into a pre-med MCAS exam and never went to medical school and say that the tips don't work, all right? So let's be um, serious here, but I'm talking about you've been studying the material. The first tip, oldie but a goodie, it's not mine, good old index cards. Most professors in class on pen and paper or on the computer, they'll check the front and back of your index card to make sure that, you know, there's nothing on it, you know, that you're not cheating. And so when you read a question, cover the options immediately. Don't even let your brain look at the options. Why? You want to read a question for what it is truly and formulate an answer. Why? Because the questions are designed to trick you, okay? So let me prove it to you. Don't believe me, let me prove it. This question here, when I wrote it, okay? 
this is what you're going to say when you go to your tutoring and one-on-one, -on -one. but Professor Victoria, all of them are right, right? All four options are me. They belong to my nickname is Steph. My initials are SV. My full name is Stephanie Victoria, and I am a nurse, right? This is designed this way because when educators write questions, they have to create what is called the Bell's Curve. Now, I don't want to get too crazy on that. All it simply means is if everyone gets an A, it's too easy. If everyone gets an F, it's too hard. So you write to kind of capture the audience right here at C. That means I have to write a question where the other options might look good. I'm tricking you, right? So all my students know the analogy I use for this is when you go on a first date, right? They're always gonna present well, smell good, be nice and tall and handsome and pretty or whatever you're into, but there's only one person that really is the true fit. Now, another thing, let me blow your mind. You think you're answering this question that is stated, what is your professor's name? But there's another question. What might that be, you might ask? The correct option in this example, C, Stephanie Victoria, when you put it in front of here, is your professor's name, actually reveals to you the true essence or the true question. And now give you a second to think about what the true question is. This question is truly asking for my full identity mind blown. And the only option that answers the true question being posed here is Stephanie Victoria. That's my full identity. So the correct option, option C, Stephanie Victoria is your professor's name, reveals to you what the true question is, or I like to say the essence of the question, which is what is your professor's full identity? Try it, try it, try it. I would love you for you to share a video, post it on Instagram, healthcare edu, no space, or on this YouTube channel, Nurse Stephanie Victoria, okay? So those are my two tips here. Cover the options, the answers with the index card, let your brain formulate an answer. Um, two, oh, it's three tips, my apologies. Two, give a rationale, for why the answers are incorrect. So meaning people always say um, they look for the correct answer, meaning um, they kind of say this answer is right because, right? So say for example, your brain wanted to pick Steph as a correct answer. Let me erase some of this. Your brain, ooh, I erased everything. <laughs> Let's just keep going. Your brain wanted to pick Steph as a correct answer. Okay, just because it wants to do that, your brain will convince you that is correct, okay? So think about all, if we stick to the relationship analogy, every time you like someone that everyone was telling you was wrong for you, you wanted to make a relationship with that person regardless. That's an example of your brain wanting something to be right that we all know sometimes isn't right, okay? So instead of finding the right answer and providing a rationale, you have to rationalize why everything else is incorrect. Meaning SV is incorrect because it's initial, nurse is incorrect because it's an occupation. Now, when you get to Stephanie Victoria, I always tell my students, I'll give you a million dollars if you can give me a rationale of why this is incorrect. You really can't. Okay, so if you get stumped, that means you're probably about to eliminate the correct answer. So when we get to the tips, you cover the options, you look and rationalize the incorrect answers instead of what you're looking for is correct. And then three, apply confusion to conclusion, right? As the final check, ask yourself, is it conclusive? And if the answer is yes, you can select that option and move on. Congratulations. So listen, I would love for you to click on courses and find out more about our courses. We have our three-in-one certificate and everything else. But honestly, if you don't attend healthcare EDU and you go somewhere else or you're taking another exam or do someone else's program, this is yours. Knowledge is power. 
Once you hear something, you can never unhear it. Go out there, be successful, pass all of your exams, okay? And if you click on courses and you enroll with us, then I'll see you then and you'll get a free ebook um, along with your registration. And I'll welcome you to the Healthcare EDU family. All right, take care.